Joshua uh, 10. Get to turn there. I got to turn here on the text. Joshua 10, 14, it says, And there was no day like, the, like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. And uh, Joshua, uh, what that's referring to there is in verses 10, or 12, excuse me, 12 uh, and 13, uh, through 13, where it says, then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? Uh, so the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hastened not to go down uh, about a whole day. And uh, verse 14 says, And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. And uh, the uh, passage that I wanted to uh, follow up tonight on is you find it in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 11 through 13. <clears throat> Habakkuk 3, verses 11 through 13. <clears throat> it says, And the sun and the moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glittering spear. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for the salvation of thine anointed. Thou woundest the head out of the house of wicked by discovering the foundation under the neck, Selah. There's a, there's a reference, a connection with that sun and moon standing still and the Lord fighting for Israel. And uh, to me, it's an interesting passage. It says, the light of thine arrows, they went and at the shining of thy glittering uh, spear. You know, the, uh, the light, uh, sta the sun stood still for about the length of a day. Okay? Now, if it's the Hebrew day, it's 12 hours is the evening and the morning is, the, is, is a day. But the, uh, and it says that thou didst march through the land in indignation. We saw in Joshua 10, uh, this march through the land, destroying not only the kings that hid in the cave, but every walled city, every stronghold where they fled. And, uh, and, the, and the amazing thing that God hearkened unto a vo the voice of a man. Now, God doesn't always answer prayers by such incredible miracles, but he does answer prayer. And, uh, uh, and as I mentioned this morning, you know, the, the issue was Joshua, Joshua, I believe, learned some things from the prior chapter. He learned not to be presumptuous. You know, he was deceived by the Gibeonites by not seeking counsel at the mouth of the Lord. In this passage in Joshua 10, we saw that the Lord answered him and says, don't be afraid of them, I'm going to deliver them unto you. And so there's no doubt to me that Joshua did seek counsel at the mouth of the Lord in chapter 10. And of course, the Lord went up and gave him a great victory. Um, and, and as the battle was ensuing, and as uh, he, Joshua saw the time running out, so to speak, the, you know, the days, uh, uh, he 
then uh, uh, commands the sun and the moon to stand still, and the Lord hearkens the, uh, uh, to a man. And he said, there's no day like that. And I, and I shared a couple of verses this morning, you know, that First John 5, if you ask anything according to my will, I'll do it. Uh, Matthew 21, where he says, you know, say to the mountain, be cast in the sea. Uh, there's uh, verse 22 of that same passage there in Matthew says, and all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Um, you know, tonight we're going to come together with a little group of us and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. And we've got a lot of needs that we'll share. Um, but, you know, going to the Lord in prayer is... God's people still really don't understand how important that is. Uh, coming... Uh, together as one, uh, agreeing as touching anything. If you is two or three, uh, as touching anything, he talks about that he will do it. Uh, we've talked about a lot of these principles over the years. Uh, Mark eleven twenty four says, "Therefore I say unto you that what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that ye shall receive them, and ye shall have them." Now that's pretty incredible statements. You know. uh, and here in Joshua uh, 10, Joshua, I believe, having learned the lesson of, of chapter 9 to seek counsel at the mouth of the Lord, does exactly that, and God gives him the great victory. And then he has enough faith to then make that incredible statement. You know. Uh, Sun, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. Yeah. You talk about going out on a limb. Yeah. Uh, but the same God that created the light, divided the light from the darkness in Genesis 1, uh, the same God that created the two lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night in Genesis 1, was certainly able to stop the sun and moon, you know, and, and like man, the critics, the Bible critics always go after this passage and ones like it and say, oh, it's impossible. Well, it's impossible if you're talking about naturally. It's not impossible with God, as I quoted Jeremiah 32, 27, which says, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? You know, we're going to go to prayer tonight, you know, and I've got a few requests I'm going to share. Uh, obviously, uh, I want prayer for my wife. She's, uh, her symptoms may be uh, accelerating. Uh, we've uh, moved up her doctor appointment. Uh, she has trouble swallowing and eating and, and uh, breathing at night. So I want to pray for her. Uh, Amanda, Chris, as you was talking about, has surgery Tuesday. Uh, mother of two? Yeah, mother of two. Young kids. Uh, very serious surgery. Needs their prayer. Uh, Martha's sister, Kathy, out of intensive care, but not out of the woods. Still got MRSA. Still in a lot of pain. Still a lot of things. Um, emotionally, you know, he's dealing with. So, uh, needs needs our prayers. Uh, Dave King goes to the doctor tomorrow. Hopefully they can figure out they can do him some good on his back, otherwise he's going to be in a wheelchair if they don't. Uh, plus he's got a lot of other physical issues. Uh, Nikki uh, may have had another heart attack. They don't know. She's going to the doctor. Now, her, back last week, she was here today. She taught the kids today. Uh, don't know. She was also taking some other medication. It may have been just a reaction to the medication, but they want to go in and check her. So we've got a lot, of, a lot of physical needs, a lot of spiritual needs. Uh, 
Prayer's key. Prayer's the, the key. Um, turn to Isaiah 45, 11. Isaiah 45, 11. Very interesting verse. <clears throat> says, Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and His Maker, Ask me of things to come concerning my sons, and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. Isn't that an interesting statement? <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his Maker, ask me, ask me of things to come, prophetic, things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands command ye me. Now I looked up the term the work of my hands. Uh, you'll find it in chapter 19 verse 25 of Isaiah. You'll find it in chapter 60 verse 21. It's a reference to people specifically God's people, but he also mentions the Assyrian and, and, a, and a couple, and a, uh, the, Egypt, uh, the, the Egyptians. But he says, uh, concerning the work of my hands, command ye thee, uh, command ye me. Now, again, this is one of those verses that uh, there's a lot of bad teaching on as well. They uh, name it and claim it bunch. You know, we'll use a verse like this and say, you know, just name it and claim it. You're going to have it and all that stuff. But if you read the context uh, of Isaiah 45, you figure out that he's not saying that man commands the Lord, like you know, the the the, the servant, the the creature commands the creator you know, uh, in that sense. But if you look at, uh, uh, you know, first, like I said, when you look at this, look, look at the context and, and, try, and, and try to find out what it doesn't say. And uh, look at uh, Isaiah 45, 9. He says, Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Okay. Let the potsherd strive. Uh, let the potsherd shri uh, strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, uh, "What makest thou?" Or thy work? Uh, he hath no hands. So he, it, this is not like the name and claim it people want to use. Uh, it's not talking about striving or questioning God. You know, we don't know what God's will will be concerning these requests that we'll even make tonight. Okay? A lot of these things, whether it be for my wife or Amanda or, or Dave King or, or Kathy Shipley or whatever, we don't know what his plan is. Uh, what Joshua knew and what led him to command what he did and for the Lord to respond to that command was he was asking according to God's will. He was fulfilling what God had commanded him to do. Okay? And on that sense, he commanded and the Lord hearkened uh, to the voice of a man. That's really what those other verses that we talked about 1 John 5, ask anything according to his will, he'll do it. Say to that mountain, be cast in the sea, he'll do it. That's all the context of that. That's not to argue with God. That's not to 
harm, you know, make him do something that's not in his will. But if we can find out what his will is concerning uh, things to come concerning his people, prophecy, or the work of his hands, uh, he says, command ye me. It's kind of like the uh, David with the imprecatory Psalms. You know, people say, you know, is it right, you know, to call down judgment upon our enemies, you know? Uh, well, what David did was just ask God to do what he already said he was going to do, you know? So when you're on the right side of the ledger, so to speak, you can call upon God to do what he said he's going to do, you know? So, like I say, it's not when he says, command ye me, it doesn't mean to argue with him. It doesn't mean to question him. Uh, and it's very clear, I think, in the context uh, what he's saying here. Look at verse 8 of Isaiah 45. It says, Drop down ye heavens from above, let the skies pour down their righteousness, let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. He's the maker. He, he creates it. Uh, verse 12, he says, I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even mine hands, the work of my hands, you know, have uh, stretched out the heavens and all their hosts have I commanded. Look at verse 18. It says, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. And we've talked about that verse in another context, but he's saying, I made it, I created it. Look at verse uh, 21. Tell ye and bring them near, yea, let them uh, take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none besides me. Verse 22, look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. What he's saying in this is, like I said, when he says, command ye me, he's not saying, don't argue with me, don't question me, but what he's saying, look unto me. Look unto me. And, and you know, what James said, you know, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. God hearkened unto a man. You know, he hearkened unto Elijah. He said, he prayed and it didn't rain for three, three years. And he prayed again and it rained. You, know, you get on the right side of the ledger with the God of heaven. Now, when Joshua was prayerless in Joshua 9, when he didn't seek counsel at the mouth of the Lord, the Gibeonites deceived him. In chapter 10, he's learned his lesson. He is on the right side of the ledger, so to speak, to the point that he has power with God, to the point that he says, moon stand still in the heavens and the sun till I accomplish what the Lord's will. Yeah. So, like I said, this morning I was trying to get through 45 verses and, 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 uh, and I didn't get through all the points that I wanted to do. But in the context of prayer tonight, I thought, let's do that. We're going to go before the throne. We're going to make our petitions to Him. We got burdens on our ha ha heart. We got people that we love and care about that are the work of his hands and we'll lift them up before him and ask 
and that his will be done concerning them.